So basically I'm dead in the water. I'm out of welding gas right now. So we're gonna shift gears here and we're gonna build a wind resistant pilot light. All right, here's a quick test of my pilot light that I'm gonna be using. Basically have a 0 0.023 welding tip inside of a brass elbow with a two inch nipple on it here. No too much. I don't know how to blow a candle out. Yeah, that's just too sensitive. I mean, that might work, but my luck, it won't. I think I need a bigger burn chamber. Pretty lazy. So I don't like it. We gotta figure something out. If I had a smaller spud, that would be better. Maybe I could try to crimp that spud closed. So this spud is just too big. I need more air. Still pretty unstable. Okay, that's about 30 psi's. All right, I'm gonna try it again. I put four breather holes at each quadrant on this stem. I think I'm gonna get it here. That alone might do it. Let's try that. Baby steps, man. Can't really see anything. Let's uh, it definitely let it burn at a higher pressure. It's about 60 psi's there. Oh yeah. I mean, it will blow out, but it's far better than what we had, huh? I don't know if you guys seen what I was doing there. It could take a little bit of a breeze now. Better than it was. I would surmise that more pressure would do better, but that's about as high as we're going to be able to get, seeing as how the system runs at 80 PSI's. That's 75 PSI's. We may not be able to maintain that during operation. It is exceedingly resistant. Now, what if I leave this thing there and it gets red hot? Will it reignite the flame? We must know. Looks really cool. No, it will not. I'll be damned. People have suggested I use this technique on some of my oil burners and I just never have tried it. Maybe it's gotta be in there some. If I could cut this, just leave it in there. Okay, as you see, it is not reigniting anything. If only it would just burn inside of there. Yeah, that is horrible. All right, so we're back. One last test. I'm battered and bloody here. Tell you what, man, this stainless steel wire, this stuff will cut your liver off, dude, if you ain't careful. I, every time I use this stuff, I bleed. What we have here is a piece of stainless steel screen. It will hopefully uh, give us a better wind resistant effect. Let all that funk burn off of there. A fairly large pilot light, but the environment this thing's going in, this isn't gonna be a stove, you know, where it's gonna light a small lazy flame. This thing has to be able to light a ferocious blast of air and propane.
Certainly very good. That is working phenomenal. The screen isn't glowing super hot. The camera's showing it yellow, but I see red. I'm seeing about 800 degrees here. You can blow it out if you let it cool off, but a little gust. I think that's gonna work just fine. Let's turn it up to say 70 PSI. Not that I want to use up that much gas. It's cooled off a little bit. I got a, an idea. It's going to take a second for this to normalize, but maybe it's more flame resistant when it's on low. Yeah, see, turning it down is already giving it a little bit of an edge. Let's go to 55. Still normalizing. There's a lot of pressure built up in the hose and the line. This spud was a .024 welding tip, but I hammered it down to who knows what. Obviously very low flow rate. So it takes a long time for the pressure built up in the hose to burn off. So if you're set at 80 PSI's and you instantly try to turn it down to 50, it won't do it. It takes forever. The wind is actually augmenting the flame at this point. Let's see if I can show you that. I'll try and keep my ugly grill out of the shot. The wind was causing the stainless steel to heat up on this backside. Ah, make a wire out of me now. Well, our pressure dropped off. That's what it is. Let's try it at about 45 PSI. Did it. Gotta let that metal heat back up. Wow, that one little Ventura is actually doing quite a bit. Did you see that? So my holes ain't doing much. There's a certain point where it actually gets that hotter. I, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up. That's pretty doggone resistant. It actually makes the stainless steel heat up. I hope you guys are catching that because that's a really cool feature of this shroud. The wind is helping heat up a certain area, which helps avoid extinguishing the flame. That is just too cool, man. So there it is. Los, I got your pilot light, dude. We're gonna install this bad boy. And uh, I hope you don't mind me calling you Los, man. I, I know a lot of Carloses. <laughs> they all go by Los for short, man. So I'll hold that down. But uh, this is where we are, dude. I finally got some welding gas. We're waiting on one solenoid valve. And what I need to know from you is, are you sure we want to put this pump in a separate box? Because I'm going to have to plug both these things in no matter what. I'll let you think about that. The pump will fit inside this space, just barely. It'll look like a damn rocket engine when it's done, but... The pump will fit inside this space, barely. Um, I kind of, I'm. that's up to you, brother. If, if you want me to put the pump in this box, I'm more than happy to do that. But what I'm saying is each component will have a plug coming off of it. We got to plug the pump in. And then inside of that unit there, we have a PID unit that must be plugged in. We have two solenoids and 
a solid state relay. So, just something to think about. You know, I've already built this thing to where the pump will barely fit because we talked about putting it in a separate unit, but uh, nonetheless, it's just something I was thinking about. The two cords might be a bit of an inconvenience. Inconvenience, whichever. All right, this is done. Doing phenomenal. I think that thing's gonna work out great. We'll be able to weld this bad boy right in place too. But, uh, so there it is, fellas. Wind resistant pilot light. That was the goal of today. And I think we accomplished it. Huh. So it's pretty doggone wind resistant at 40 PSI as well. Conserving fuel even. So we'll go with it. All right, so here's the preheat coil. Before I cover it all up, that's going to be living on the bottom of this coil here. The bottom of this burner is covered in water. Hopefully uh, that'll heat that water up. Just got everything taxed in place, ready to insulate this and cap it off. That ought to keep us from lighting the ground on fire. All right, we got the bottom flashing on. This is a stainless steel flame shield that's gonna keep the fire directly off the insulation. We don't want that. And I've got the preheater boxed in. We are too legit to quit. Okay, we are making progress here. Getting ready to cage this bad boy in. All right, fellas, I am churning and burning over here, man. Got the firewall done. Got some insulation in here. That's gonna keep all the electronics from overheating. Basically, this is where we're at. I've been doing a lot of messing around with the control panel. Getting ready to drill those holes. And I have basically bought every fitting in three major hardware stores. And I don't have enough stuff still. I'm basically running out of quarter inch flare fittings. I have bought every quarter inch flare fitting in a town of 200,000 people. So, gonna have to get a better supply chain going here for sure. My next move is to open up all this greatness. <laughs> I'm gonna have two solenoid valves in this thing, an igniter. Got a solid state relay. Got a real nice uh, fenching control module here. It's my pressure switch. Got an Inkbird PID. That's gonna be our temperature switch. So we're gonna have a solenoid for the pressure cutoff for the fuel and a separate solenoid for the temperature cutoff for the fuel.